Today I gave young Frankie a challenge. Oh no. It's been a full month since I took him under his, my wing as a him under my wing as a janitor, so I do hope he's up to the task. I'll keep my fingers crossed. You really are fond of him, aren't you? Yes, well the boy has potential. He's definitely worth teaching. And quite candidly, I've been wanting to train a protege. Mind you, one that uh, that does not mean I intend to go easy on him. Sounds like Frankie's not out of the woods just yet. Maybe he's just stepping into it. It's the bath. Okay, wash up. Let's see who I run to this time. Who? next week is going to be intense. Just when I started to feel like I've gotten used to the pace here too. Exam results, Panzer slot training, and our field exercises. I hope the students are able to rest up today while they can. Oh, someone's coming in over there. Shorzer, is that you? Yeah, usually I'm the one asking though. Ah, uh, the bath is nice as always. It took quite a bit of mirror to renovate it, but it was money well spent. So it was you who paid for the renovations after all. You seem to really enjoy it. Do you like going to hot springs too? Oh yes, since I was released from my military service, I've been visiting them all over. I went to a resort spa in Michelin. I also visited the Phoenix Wings in your hometown. Oh, I see. Wait, what? I've also gotten a natural hot springs hidden away in the mountains. The kind where bears and other woodland creatures join you. I also visited a hot spring on the side of a cliff overlooking the ocean. It was a spectacular view. I hear you're quite the hot spring fanboy. Any recommendations? After hearing that list, well, um... Oh, last year I went, I was in Ulster for some business. And there, there, was, there were some hot springs called the Hidden Spirit Springs. They were tucked away in the ruins in the forest. Is, oh? You've piqued my interest. Tell me more. Huh, well, it was the time when... I knew where you were from, but I didn't expect to have such an engaging conversation with you like this. Join me again sometime, perhaps without the wall in the way of our conversation. Or that might be okay at a bathhouse, but I'm not sure about here. Oh, and there's something I've been wondering. Oh, what about? It might be just my imagination, but... Are you channeling your energy? It's just I'm getting the same sensation from you when, that I did when you went up against the Maiden. Is something going to happen at a briefing this afternoon? Schwarzer, are you able to get a hold of Master Yun Kafai or the Divine Blade of Wind, Arios McLean? Or maybe the commander of the Liberalian army, Cassius Bright? What? Well, Master's always traveling, so not really. And I know the other two, but... Oh, I see. Then I shall look to the goddess to guide me. I eagerly await your development towards greatness. The Eight Leaps One Blade School. I would like to see how far it can go. I have absolutely no clue what that was all about, and I regret asking. But Master could find the two Divine Blades. Restore her CP as well, but she's not in the party. Otherwise, I'd try to see uh, about, uh, what her costumes look like. Hmm. The next opponent. I just received word from the others. I will be in Heimdall for the Summer Festival. I will be assisting with the mass that's going on, uh, going to be held in the Heimdall Cathedral. I see. Well, given that it's you, I imagine you've got three or four ulterior motives too. Hey, perhaps you know me too well. Yes, I do have our business. Like, helping Thomas? But please don't let that concern you. Man, the Grawls River doesn't come to play. On an unrelated note, you play Banished Masters, don't you, Reen? I'm a little late to the party, but the children finally convinced me to start playing. If you'd like, we could play together sometime. I'm done whatever you are. I want, uh, even though these people say they played uh, only started playing recently, they seem to have a lot of rare cards to begin with. How? They beat that many people off screen? Sister, the healing Please type. Go easy on me. Okay, I'm gonna have to kamikaze both Rakus. Gonna power up a bit. I'm sure she has a plan. All set for the kamikaze. Oh, 
Oh no! Powering up! Nothing? Oh shoot, the sister has only one attack, so I can't actually kamikaze them yet. Because counterattacks tend to be weaker. Okay, for now, just whack the sister. If this Hepatis tries to fight the Raku, it'll take a lot of damage too, even if it manages to kill them. My Aetherian, uh, my Aetherian is in uh, in position to attack. Do your worst. Blix, no. I need to do something about this. Thanks for the free card. More Ifarians. I, I have a plan to get rid of the Blix immediately. Hmm. First attack you, so I can free up some space. Oh, oh crap, I didn't take any damage. I was hoping to draw a card from that. Oh well. Hmm. Now the sister. Okay, you're powering up. New Natials? No? Okay, we'll finish you off then. Yep, need more practice. You are pretty much one hit away from death. Powering up further. Wait, that... That effect, it can protect other members. I see, this could be an issue. Earth is good against water though, so I actually have a huge advantage. Five damage. Go for and done. <laughs> Congratulations. Didn't that feel good, Val? I suppose that would be my equivalent of faithing. Admittedly, I do feel a bit lighter, both physically and in spirit. Mint, did you, did you really cl uh, cl all, uh, clean all of Velomar? Hey, Irene. Hey, yeah, sure did. I just kind of wanted to try it. He was pretty shiny to begin with, but giving him a nice brushing was fun. I found it enjoyable as well. I'm glad to have Meister Mint here. Her unique ideas provide me with new experiences. 
Oh, Val, you flatter me. Meister Mint, huh? That title is usually reserved for Master Craftsman. High praise coming from Valimar. Okay, hopefully this defense setup will serve me well for this uh, uh, Panzer Solot training. See, since this is our third time, maybe I should have them take on both of us. Oh, crap. Let's see if they're up for another round. Who should we kill first? Alright, Reen, let's give him hell. Right back at you, Randy. Man, this is a little ridiculous. We must simply give it our all. Heh, <laughs> I'll mess him up. Well, I'll support you guys like usual. Heh, <laughs> I shall do my best from the sidelines here. All of you got- uh, All you gotta do is be up both machines and you win. Ready? Go! Man, I hope this is enough. Slight speed bonus, slight defense bonus. This should be good, right? I forgot their stances, unfortunately. You better be ready! Defeat Bo. It's my turn! Can't defend in the first turn. I gotta make my move now. Oh, they do retain some of their information. Maybe I should take on Velomar first. Yeah! Our chance! It's mine! My turn! I got this. It's down! It's mine! See so you def deal with my defenses. Ow. Here I go! Yeah! Wide open! It's mine! My turn! It's down! It's mine! I got this. You're mine! Good, I managed to get the BP for that one. Yeah! He's not br unbalancing us for some reason. Okay. Let's use a Sapphire Rain just in case, because we're still going to eat a ton of damage this turn. Oh, crap. Yeah! There! Ugh, he can unbalance after all. Oh, damn. It's my turn! Wide open! Everyone ready? Got it! Leave it to me! It's mine! Oh wait, I just realized. That means Randy and... Uh, that means Randy and Reen can use their Unite attacks too, since they have t the minimum prerequisites. Oh no! Very well. It's down. It's mine. Take that. Ah. Yeah. Oh no, he's gonna do it. An opening. I thought he was gonna. My turn. Okay, seriously, why is it taking so long to get my support turns right now? Damn. You're mine. Good and balanced. All right, Spirit. My turn. Uh, there. Sit. Uh, now. Let's decrease Reen's speed a bit before he does any too much damage to me. My turn. You're mine. I'm getting a lot of lucky crits here, aren't I? It's my turn. 
I only have enough for one more Sapphire Rain. Let's hope this is enough to survive whatever they throw at me. Let's go! Oh no! Wait, he's not using his Unite attack. He's only using Enlightened Domination. But that, I might not be able to survive this. Oh, he survived. Good. There. It's my turn. You can't escape. Fire! Yeah. Sure. You're mine. Yes. The yeah, the fifth mine. point. Good job. I shall go. Yeah. Lots of speed down. Take that. My turn. I just need to use a unite attack. All right. Go! Go! Our chance! Everyone ready? Leave it to I me! Go! 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 It's mine! Go! Uh, there! Go! It's silver! Uh, uh, go! Uh. I'm going! Here's a little something! My turn! Yeah! It's down! It's mine! Very well! Uh, there! It's down! It's mine! It's my turn! Okay, I'll finish off Reen with this one. And then heal up the Hector. Wide open! Still? Oh no. Shit, I'm guess I'm gonna have to risk it. All to take you out, Reen. It's mine! <laughs> nice! My turn. Reen is still gonna try to kill the Hector. Maybe Ash is his least favorite student. Okay, I can just knock out Reen like this. That was good. One down. My turn. Go, 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 go. Sure. Spirit. Here I go. And you have enough points to defend. Take that! I'm going! Ha! Mass heal. I got this. Void breaker. Now. Heat this! Go! That's what you get for being careless. Go. Here I go! Go, go! Our chance! It's mine! Go! Very well. Go! 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 go. go. It's my turn! Yeah! Go! 
Our chance! Speed down. Very well. You almost got him. It's down. It's mine. My turn. He is very speed down. My turn. Let's delay him. Now. Hate this! That's what you get for being careless. Yeah! Absolute unbalance. Even without the prerequisite points, it just fills us up and we deal a finishing blow with an unbalancing attack. Ryan! Combo! That's what you get for stealing my Unite attack. So this is it. <laughs> Done already? That's it. Team students win. Oh yeah. We managed to win. <laughs> this ain't half bad for training. That really was amazing. Oh yeah, so it's simply stupendous. Huh, they sure have grown a lot. Yeah, I couldn't be prouder. Huh? Aren't you guys gonna get up and shrug off for victory? The branch campus's enhancement rating rose greatly. That was surprising. They didn't get back up. They just stood... They stayed kneeling. Huh. Let's see, they've got a keep test and a little panzer assault at training. But I was looking at refreshing and ready to go, so I'll make sure I'm ready too. I can't believe it. A new work from Miss Dorothy real already? I have to let Musei know. So Dor Dorothy's published a new book, huh? Huh, <laughs> good to see she's doing well. Miss Dorothy's latest work. I have to buy one. No, wait, no. Two at the very least. Ow, oh, I had a headache all morning. Did I catch something? I also feel like I'm forgetting something important. What's wrong with me this morning? Mm, this looks good. Wayne, a gift for someone? Uh, for someone? Oh, hello, Instructorine. Yes, I have a sister who is two years younger than me. She told me she wanted some goods from the store. Ah, oh, so that's how it is. That's nice of you. Huh, she wouldn't stop complaining if I declined, so I really have no choice in the matter. I should check my wallet before I go to... Oh, no. What's wrong? Uh, it's nothing. Do you forget your wallet? It's just that I have a lot less money than I thought. I mean, I could save on lunch money if I ask Freddy for food, but... Heh, don't overdo it. This price is unexpectedly high. I mean, I could save on lunch money... Hmm, but Freddy's food isn't that bad. It's just the smell that's bad, but the taste is alright. And it's pr actually pretty nutritious. Ow, my body aches all over today. It's probably because I had to carry Rachel home after she, she drank too much. Heh. <laughs> so it's related to, uh, to why she was having a headache. Her, her being a lightweight is no secret. You think she'd know when to cut herself off. A few new items, but usually the uh, uh, the stores in the town uh, in the next town will have better uh, 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 equipment. Usually, so I'm not sure it's worth upgrading yet. Plus, it could interfere with my evade tank strategies. My sister ended up helping a lot. She's been tired after work, but I don't want her- so I don't want her to, but still. If she collapses before the summer festival, it's gonna be worse for me. I need to do something about this. This rate, Gina's gonna collapse before the summer festival. I need to do something. I was hoping I could just kick back, relax, and do some reading and enjoy a drink today, but... There were a ton of parties last night. And they're almost out of stock. This is the only one left. I'm so sad. No new recipes. Daisy's been worried about Gina lately. She tells me Gina's been tired from working too much. Yeah, she's been pretty busy as of late. She put quite a lot on herself helping out the students during the midterm season. Is that so? I didn't know that. I should make her take a break. 
Now things should be uh, uh, slowed down a bit today, right? What's uh, what's Cerberus doing here? Oh, so they're doing the shopping, eh? Two balls of glue and three tubs of high-grade grease. Does he understand him? That is kind of crazy. I've never seen such an obedient puppy before. I imagine he'll grow into a fine dog one day. Wahaha! Major Irving, it's rare of you to take a break. Despite what you may think of me, I do take breaks, Schwarzer. It's my first time here, but I'm impressed by the selection. Whom I wouldn't mind frequenting this cafe. Uh, Randy mentioned it too, but Major Irving has really softened up. Okay, looks like there's a quest here. Le uh, Liza hasn't been herself lately. It's like she's daydreaming. Oh, I get it. It must be a guy. Ooh, I'm gonna ask her later. Okay, let's get your quest done with. Oh, welcome, Instructor. Do you come here for my request, perhaps? That's right, your bread is great too, but I just came to help out. You wanted me to look for something? Yes, but it's personal. I'm so sorry for bringing you out here for this, it might be a little harder than you expected. <laughs> don't worry about it. So can you tell me about it? Um, okay. Are you aware that I'm not from the leaves area? I'm actually, I actually only moved here last year. Yeah, I heard. When that time your store has gotten so popular, people are coming here all the way from the capital. Fortunately, yes. But I actually came here once before, two years ago. I really fell in love with this town and decided to open up my shop here, with him. With him? So you came here on vacation with your boyfriend? Um, well, he was my lover, my fiancé. Oh, I see, I never knew she had a fiancé. Wait, aren't you writing this place on your own? Yes, we promised we would open the store together. But due to cer certain circumstances, I came here by myself to get the business rolling. Recently, though, I received a strange letter from him. He sent me a grand opening gift. I need to solve the riddle he gave me in, me in order to find it. That really, you say? This is, that is interesting. Don't tell me your boyfriend is blue blonde. He can be too playful sometimes. It's not urgent, but if you could help me. A gift from her fiancé. I don't blame her for being barred by it. It probably won't be a ring, will it? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd love to help you. Thank goodness, it's been barring me for a while. Now then, would you mind taking a look at the letter? Certainly. Hmm. Dear Sliza, you should have opened your, the bakery by now. I'm sure your days are filled with work and worry. But when you have a spare moment, I'd like you to follow these clues. The secret words we left behind the place where travelers first stop. There you should be able to find my gift to you. Hmm, I see. Some kind of puzzle. The place where travelers first stop. Hmm, the first place a tourist visit says... Do you have any idea what he means? Yes, I think I do. Your gift should be weighing at the very end. I'll let you know when I find it. Very well. I'm sorry for putting a personal trouble like this on you. Well, thank you, Instructor. Reina already knows that there's going to be a long chain of events. Hmm, does that mean it really is Blue Blonde? Oh man, I, I did not expect this. I mean, he did ki kidnap uh, 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 someone one time, but... Hmm. Okay, let's see. The station. This part, The part of the riddle where travelers first stop. The first place in town someone would, uh, would definitely be Leaves Station. I was no exception. I went through here too, the first time I came to Leaves. Huh. Time sure does fly. See what words we left behind at the place where travelers first stop. The next part is the secret words we left behind. I guess I'll have a look around. How big is this place? Oh, hello there. Is, something, is there something I can help you with? Yeah, I'm looking for something. Is there anywhere here at the station where people can leave messages or anything like that? Uh, do you mean the memories notebook? You can find it in the waiting room over there. Maybe I should go take a glance at it. I don't see any calling cards, so maybe it's not him. Maybe it's some, uh, someone else. Memories notebook. Please use this to record the memories of your trip. This is a notebook for visitors to write their me thoughts and memories in. The secret words we left behind. I wonder if Liza wrote anything in it. No, that would have been two years ago, so... Whip, whip. Ah, here we go. He took a day off so we could come on a two-day trip. Leaves is such an adorable little town. Julian, our dream is to open a bakery. Look, if not, small towns like this are better for... Uh, a better fit for us in crowded places like Heimdall. Hope we'll be able to find a good location. 
We also have to go visit the House of the Shining Cup together. She did say yes after all. That's a private matter. No need to be shy, Lisa. I'm not. <laughs> not sure I get what they were talking about, but it's clear they were enjoying themselves. And this part sticks out to me. It must be what the letter was talking about. The House of the Shining Cup. Where in leaves could that be? Maybe we'll check there. The House of the Shining Cup has to be referring to the Septian Church, right? Father Henry might know something. I better ask him. Oh, can I help you with something? I'd like to ask you a question. Do you happen to remember two travelers coming by here from the capital about two years ago? There were a couple. I'm sure you've seen quite a few people that might match the description, but... Oh, actually, I believe I know who it is you're referring to. They came to enjoy a tour of the church together. Two of them were so in love, I couldn't possibly have forgotten. The two had recently gotten engaged. If I remember correctly, the man's name was Julian. They consulted me about potentially having their wedding here. I see, so that's what the note meant by her saying yes. You may already know, but that woman was Liza, the bakery owner. She still comes around from time to time. Yeah, it turns out she fell in love with leaves and ended up moving here. Unfortunately, Julian hasn't come yet. Ah. Father? Sorry, it's nothing. I just remembered that Julian left me a letter. He told me that someday someone would come here asking about the two of them. Do you want me to give it to you? Well, I don't know if I'm worth your receiving, but... It should be fine. It's what you requested. Besides, you've been helping Liza out, haven't you? Alright, I'll take it. Thank you. Here it is. Now let's see here. Liza, there's one thing I know for sure. We'll move to this town someday, so until then, I'll leave this gift with the Keeper who watches from the hill. I hope this happiness lasts forever. Julian. This is... You left this, the gift somewhere. Does that mean it's been s somewhere in leaves for two years? That's very surprising. I hope this happiness lasts forever isn't the kind of message you leave with just any gift. Uh, did he discover something? Yes, I think I have a good idea. I should look into this. The Keeper who watches from the hill. If it's leaves, the hill prob part probably refers to... Could be that one spot? Wow, the weather is awesome today. Really gives the kiddos a chance to soak up some sun. Uh, so you call your fruits and vegetables your kiddos, huh? Yes, I put great care into growing them, after all, even if I'm going to eat them later. It's such a shame that we have to eat them in the end. Well, we can always just eat them with love. Just like that one book about that sentient tomato. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Apparently there was a small hill here before the branch campus was, was built. The keeper who watches from the hill, could it mean the tallest tree here? Okay, I'll check it out. We got permission to dig around the big tree in the gardening area. After searching a couple of spots, he uncovered a small box wrapped in oil paper. I didn't expect to find something like this here. This Julian guy seems like a quite an interesting character. It's kind of risky. If they had to destroy the hill to to bury it here, what if, what if the package got destroyed during the uh, during the renovation process? Anyway, now that I found it, I should tell Liza. So, oh my! So this is where it's been all this time. But why would he do something like so roundabout like this? Mumble, mumble. Erm, um, will you care to do the honors, Liza? Oh yes, well then. Liza? Oh, it's nothing. I was just thinking about how long it's been since back then. Liza gently opened the small box. Inside was a small, beautifully wrapped bottle and a letter. My beloved Liza, by the time you read this, you probably you may have already opened up your bakery. If so, I'd like to congratulate you. Your hard work was, has seen the dream we shared come true at long last. I wish you all the blessings in the world. But the fact that you found this means I must no longer be there by your side. It seems I have left you all alone, and for that I am deeply sorry, my love. I swore to always make you happy, and I've been proud to uphold that promise my whole life. By worrying in my absence, your beautiful smile has been exchanged for tears. This may not be enough to atone for breaking my promise, but I've included the seeds of this letter. I got them during my last post. They're supposed to be pretty good, uh, pretty good full of nutrients, with a distinctive flavor. I know they'll go perfectly with your delicious bread, so he must be a soldier. I hope my worry proves to be nothing, and that you're smiling that beautiful smile of yours as you live out your our dream. My eternal love to you, Julian. Julian. So this is what you left to me. This is so very like you. I had been wondering, but... Did Julian... I'm sorry, Instructor, I shouldn't have kept it from you. He... Julian was very kind and smart, but was born to a poor family. In order to get a scholarship, he had to enroll in the military academy on the countryside. After he graduated, he said he had to give back, so he enlisted in the military. He planned to retire from the military after two years, and then we'd open a bakery together. No way. But one day he was called to active duty and never returned. It's, it's already been a year and a half since then. So he did pass away, and the Civil War too. After I lost him, I didn't know what to do. For a whole year afterward, 
it felt as though my very soul has been ripped out. Even after that, it was too painful to live alone. No, maybe it was that I wanted to run away from the place we had lived together in together. I ran up to my own leaves and opened the bakery. But somehow I felt as though I'd broken a promise to him. I felt so guilty. But seeing this, it seems like he's already forgiven me. Yeah. It's clear to me that Julian genuinely wished for your happiness. And as a soldier, he knew something might happen to him, so he buried this letter for you to find. He worried that you might end up losing your way. So he wanted to make sure you opened the bakery you'd planned to. Huh? I don't know that for sure. But I feel like that's the message these herb, herb seeds were meant to convey. I see. The first letter I showed you was sent by his family. They found it while going through his sphinx. It was as though he'd written the letter himself only the other day. It seemed like he just knew I had opened a bakery. I found myself wondering how he could have known. But I think I was finally able to receive his last wish for me. Thank you so much for finding this for me. And please come visit our bakery anytime. Liza, of course I will. You can count on me as one of your regulars. Pancakes. Okay, this could take a while. I heard this quest has a lot of different variations. The show's been doing well, but Monk's been busy. Though it looks like he's been dealing with some technical problems lately. I guess I could help him organize today's letters. Hmm, all the topics are very summary. I don't want any stupid stories, but I better look for something cute. Oh, Reen, did Solison con contact you? Yeah, do you have some trouble with your radio show? Yeah, it's a pretty long story though, and I hate for you to take I hate to take up your time. I won't bother you with it if you're busy right now. He seems pretty worried. I do have a lot of things to do, but maybe I can at least hear him out. Well, for some time, for the time being, can you tell me the story? He said something about appearing on a radio program. Huh, yeah. Reen, do you know Radio Chester's early morning radio drama? Oh, I didn't know you guys were running a radio drama. I heard you were working on a short drama, but I retrained in the morning, so I never, I never heard it. I see, that might actually be for the better. Huh? Ahem, the show is an adventure drama called Eternal Noon. It started in the spring and it's been it really been catching st uh, steam with the listeners. And during the uh, uh, summer festival in the capital, we're going to do a special show during prime time. I see, I've never heard of it, but it sounds interesting. So what's the problem? Um, well, we have some issues with the protagonist and the heroine. We hired two actors from a theater company, but both of them came down with food poisoning. I see, food spoils faster this time of year. I guess they had bad luck. Wait, are you asking? Yep, I'm asking you to play the protagonist. No, no, no way, I can't do that. I've never acted in my life. The fans are going to be furious. Well, the saving grace here is that your voice is really similar to his. It's not unheard of in this industry, and I'll do everything I can to help you. And most importantly, I think you'll f you fill the protagonist role perfectly. Even if that is true, didn't you say the heroine got food poisoning too? Y well, yes. The way this show works, the heroine changes every episode. A few scripts are all ready to go, so I think we can make this work. So, I have a few people in mind that we both know. I was hoping you might be able to convince one of them. It was nice knowing you. Hey, wait! Like I said, the show's finally picking up steam. I don't want to end like this. I've been working on this story ever since our school days. It's my precious baby. And just like a in time, I want nothing but quality entertainment for our listeners. Sigh. This is so out of the blue, but I feel sorry for him. It's gonna be hard, asking someone we know to play the heroine. Okay, I don't know what like, I can do, but I'll try my best. Thanks, Reen. I don't even know how to begin the thank you. We don't have much time, right? Come on, let's get started. So what do you think would be a good, good for a heroine role? Oh, yeah. For, so first of all, the drama is set in the fictional kingdom located in the center of the continent. The main character's name is Noon. He's a skilled agent who carries out a secret, uh, secret orders from the second-born princess. He's got quite an interesting background. White hair, black clothes, and his hip is, uh, is his chosen blade. A type of eastern sword known as a katana. Did you base him on Reen? Seems like it. I don't even know where to be, uh, where to start with this main character. So for the heroine, I'm thinking a petite troublemaking engineer named Femi, or a female merchant with an accent named Burfo who goes up against big companies, or a plucky med student named Nanai who works at a big hospital that was taken over by a pharmaceutical company, or a sister named Reese Say who is part of the church's secret order of knights. Wait, how do you know about that? Was Muck informed about the Grawl's Ritter? Those are heroines for the scripts that are ready to go. Okay, I think know who you have in mind. Mint for the engineer, Becky for the merchant, Lene for the med student, and Rosine for the sister. Shoot. 
how do you? I can't believe he figured it out so easily. Maybe he he's secretly a collaborator for Rosine. I, 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 was there some dialogue hinting to this? There probably was, and I missed it. Yeah, so I want you to ask one of them to play the part of the heroine. So let, I'll let you decide who you want to go with. Okay, I don't have much time, so go ask around. You need to prepare for the recording, right? Go ahead and do that for the time being. Alright, got it. Radio Star started, so now I have to pick one and only one. Okay, I'll start with the person I don't want to finalize. Each one has a, a different prize, and Rosine has the best prize, in my opinion. What's wrong, Rain? You're looking a wee bit troubled. Well, the hero in role for the radio drama, a fiery female merchant who goes up against big companies. He says something about an accent, too. It's perfect for Becky. In fact, it's probably based exactly on her. Oh, well, actually, Monk gave me a request. Uh, yeah, I knew you wouldn't want to do this. How much are you, they paying? Huh? Let me guess, you're going to use this to get free publicity. Maybe, actually, maybe they can pay me by running ads. Either for my store, or the Celtic Grand Market, or for each street in Crossbell. Well, knowing the, uh, that monk, the uh, monk's the producer, will work it out. I see, a business opportunity to her, even if it's a little bit awkward. No time to waste, though. Let's start negotiating. She's unusually enthusiastic. Reed and Becky headed over to the radio station and met with Monk. They were handed the script. After reading it over a few times, they were already ready to record. As a side note, Becky forced them to air commercials for her during the broadcast. Reed and Becky gave Fink for her trails for the roles of the protagonist and heroine. And although there were some hiccups, the recording went very smoothly. All that was left was to record the climatic scene. Okay, next is the climatic car chase scene of the enemy squad. Bertha finds pr the proof that the big corporation secretly killed her father, but... The orbital car Noon is driving is being chased by a bunch of armored vehicles driven by the bad guys. I'll let you two figure out how you want to do this. Seriously, that protagonist is definitely based on Reen. The fact that he sees a different girl all the damn time. And uh, the white hair part, I guess uh, I guess it is common knowledge... It's somewhat common knowledge about, among the... Uh, main campus students that Reen has that uh, super mode. It's up to us, okay. Alright, let's do this. One, two, three, four. Damn, we've got five on our tail. Noon, you got any grenades? An anti tank rifle would work too. Sorry, I only use a katana. Just use your arc slash. I'll try lo to lose them. Fasten your seatbelt and brace yourself. No bother. This is the last scene. You two are at a dead end and you're using the orbital car as a shield. With the enemies fast approaching, Noon tells Burfa to escape and then she scolds him for it. That is just like Reen. Damn. I'm first, I'd say. Casually urge her. Looks like we've got no choice. I'll buy us some time. When you see an opening, rent it into the guild. I'm up next. Let's see. Reprima reprimand and decline. Don't be daft. Didn't the princess tell you already? You need to quit trying to shoulder everything on your own. Think about how those around you feel. Damn, Monk, it's like you're trying to tell Reen something. And cut. That was perfect. You guys are perfect together. Heh, <laughs> that's good. Heh, <laughs> easy as. Of all the twists and turns, the recording was done in an hour. Reen and Becky gathered up their things and prepared to head out. Thank you both so much. We're going to start editing it now, but I think it's going to turn out, out great as the air episodes. Now I'm not sure we'll match up to the real thing. I don't know. Since the characters are based almost di uh, directly on you, I think it'll work out very well. I got some commercial time, so no complaints from me. Anyway, it was no coincidence you asked us to play these characters, huh? Gulp. Their dialogue sounds dead like me and Reen. So I guess some parts are exaggerated. Heh, <laughs> well... You're exactly right. I described your mannerisms to the scriptwriter while adding a splash of flavor. I just thought modeling the main character after E2 would make a really good story. I figured that was the case. 
Well, that's fine, but I may need to charge you for using my likeness. How about more commercials, a radio shopping show, and top it off with a personal links? I'll do what I can. Adamantine Shield is hers, but... Hmm, I'm not sure I really need that right... Uh, too many of those right now. What was your post-acting dialogue? Well, I did Monk a favor and snatched up some advertising potential. Not a bad gig, either. Maybe I'll try to convince him to let me appear again. <laughs> I expect no less of you, Becky. I think it was out of Monk's pocket, so be nice to him. Your building isn't at Kleist Mall in Ordis, I? Yeah, I was helping off Ferris. Uh, it seems like downsizing and cost cuttings making a, a life a living Gehenna at pretty much all of the Kleist affiliated shops. Even still, I didn't expect things to get this bad. I knew he would be working with the government to help me out his rivals, but it feels like he's going out way too far now. Wait, Kleist and Co. is connected with t the Imperial government. Aye, right, word has it they were even involved in the birdcage operation over in Crossbell, which we would have learned with Machias if we had committed to his event. They made some big donations to curry, curry favor or something like that. Doesn't sound like much like Hugo. Hugo has always been business-minded, but he's no opportunist. Aye, right, that's what bothered me about it all. Oh well, guess there's no point in thinking about it uh, now. You can just go check up on Kleist & Co. next time in Heimdall. Yeah, let me know if you find anything. No, no bar, leave it to me. The reason I'm here in the first place is to help out. Alright, Linda, you're next. Oh, I'm instructor reading, is something wrong? It looks like you're in a hurry. Uh, well... The heroine's role is a young doctor in training. She seems to fit the bills, so maybe I'll ask. Actually, Monk had a request for me. Even if it's just my voice, me in a drama? Yeah, sorry, it's pretty out of the blue, huh? Oh, but that radio drama. There was a patient I met at St. Ursula who loved that show. Wow, so even Crossbell listens to the Empire's radio broadcasts, huh? Yeah, she'd been in the, the hospital for a long-term illness. She'd always listened to this show first thing in the morning. I became friends with her while I was training there, but... Alright, I'll agree to help you out. I've never acted before, so I'm not sure what goal it'll be, but... Huh, well, the two of us will be in the same boat there, so no worries. We'll need as much practice time as we can, so what do you say we hurry to this radio station? Okay. Reed and Linda headed over to the radio station and met with Monk. They were handed a script. After reading it over a few times, they were ready to record. Reed and Linda gave fitting portrayals for the roles of protagonist and heroine. And although there were some hiccups, the recording went very smoothly. All that was left was the recorded climatic scene. Okay, next is the climatic scene in the pharmaceutical company's underground lab. Nanai discovers the missing patients, who have all been mutated. Whoa, that took a dark turn! In order to cure the mutations, Nu and Nanai attempt to get the vaccine. I'll let you two figure out how you want to do this. It's up to us, okay. I'll do my best. So this is what happened to all the missing patients. Noon, please don't hurt them. I'm sure we can still cure. I know, I'm going to try to knock them out first. Second form. This is the last scene. A mutant dog attacks a mastermind. The dog was a nice pet, Arago. The vaccine or her pet. Nai realizes she must choose one or the other. Rosa in shock, Noon's voice snaps her out of it. The vaccine or my beloved family member. Both are important. Hmm. Regretfully choose the vaccine. Sorry, Arago. But if we don't do something about you, we won't be able to save anyone. Now it's my line. I should... Okay, first choice. Forcefully encourage. It can't be the only way. There has to be a way to get the vaccine and save your family. All I, all I need is an, op just an, is an opening for just a split second. That's it. If I just use that thing the head nurse gave me. And cut. That was perfect. You guys were perfect together. Huh, <laughs> that's good. Phew, what a relief. Of all twists and turns, the recording was done in an hour. Reed and Linda gathered up their things and prepared to head out. Thank you both so much. We're gonna start editing it now, but I think it's going to turn out as great as the other episodes. And I'm not so sure we match up to, we'll match up to a real thing. I'm still just an amateur after all, so I'm not very confident either. Anyway, it was no coincidence you asked us to play these characters, huh? 
Gulp. They spoke the exact same way Reed and I do. No, maybe with a little spicing up here and there. Heh, <laughs> well... You're exactly right. You know, script mannerisms to the script writer while adding a splash of flavor. I just thought modeling the main characters after you two would make a really good story. I figured that was the case. Well, nevertheless, I hope all your listeners enjoy it, especially anyone tuning in at St. Ursula. I guess the hospital setting can't be helped, but make sure you emphasize this is fiction. Yes, of course. Since I'm all the hospital after St. Ursula's, I'll make sure to credit them too. Hey, fellas. Fitting for the nurse type. Recording that radio drama was so much more fun than I expected. Hey, I hope the listeners and the people of St. Ursula's have as much fun listening to it as I did recording it. <laughs> well, the acting that good, I'm sure they will. Today's briefing will reveal the location of the next field exercise camp. There's no telling where it will be, so I'll make sure you guys are ready for anything. We're really grateful, thank you. I don't imagine things will be as hectic as last time, but it never hurts to be prepared. I'll say, that's how our students are really make my job easier. They're also reliable. I mean, I'm always worried about taking care of them, but I want to believe in the students at fours. That makes two of us. I'll make sure Class 7 doesn't let you down. Oh, hey, Reen, where's, where's the fire? Um, well, the heroine in the script is a small, troublemaking female and engineer. She seems perfect with a role, a little too perfect. May I ask her? Oh, well, actually, Monk gave me a request. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Wait, really? See, I might have to tune to that drama every once in a while. I figure this way I'll be able to brag to Uncle Makarov and all my friends. Well, that's great, thanks. Alright, let's head to the radio station. Yeah, go, go, go. Reen and Mint head over to the radio station and met with Monk. After reading the script over two or three times, they were ready to record. Reen and Mint gave fitting portrayals for the roles of the protagonist and heroine. And although there were some hiccups, the recording went very smoothly. All of his levels record a climatic scene. Okay, next is a climatic scene on top of the train. Femi will go down to the uh, coupler to try to release the bomb. While Noon fights off the group of assassins that are coming from every direction. I'll let you two figure out what you, how you want to do this. It's up to us, okay. See, leave it to me. In the name of the seven stars, one god, I won't let you pass. <laughs> what? Noon, I'm almost done. I need 30 more seconds. I'll give you all the time that you need. This is the end. As the trained car and couples, the bomb begins to detonate. Just as Femi is accepting her fate, Noon gestures for her to jump into his arms. Same for my line. What should I say in this situation? Thank Noon nonchalantly. Hey, I guess this is it. Thanks, Noon, for everything. Now this is my line. I should... You can thank me later. Quick, jump over to me. Here goes. And cut. That was amazing. You guys make a perfect hero-heroine duo. Huh, <laughs> that's good. T, well, at the risk of sounding arrogant... With all the twists and turns, the recording was done in an hour. Reed and Mint gathered up their things and prepared to head out. Thank you both so much. We're gonna start editing it now, but it's gonna turn out great. Still, that was super fun. There's no coincidence. Gulp? They're literally just Reed and me. I mean, it was kinda traumatized, but... Heh, <laughs> well... You're exactly right. I figured that was the case. Well, it was fun, so I guess I can't get too mad. But I will be compensated, right? Yes, of course, I'll pay you with my own money. Oh shoot, I forgot to follow up with the... Uh, with the previous people who... did this. Yeah, let me check the hangar real quick. I'm sure uh, in case Min has something to say. Radio drama was super fun. Hey, Val has a great voice. Let's bring him in next time. 
Or I don't know if that's the best idea. Time to commit. What's wrong, Rain? It looks like something's barring you. Ha, huh, you're sharp. The heroine role for the radio drama. A sister who belongs to a secret order of knights. She told me I'm the only one who knows about that. So you knows it too, Rain. Actually, Monk had a request for me. Since I have duties in the morning, I don't listen to that show. But even so, I think it's just a coincidence that's about the secret knights of the church. Not- probably not. You're probably gonna have to uh, put a gag order on Monk. I think- what was it? Red Moon Rose? That had a similar storyline. Or, I thought- or was it Cornelia? I heard the church allows that as a, di a diversion. In any case, I understand. I'll ask permission from, from my superior. It's, if it's approved, I'll do it. Thanks. Or did Red Moon Rose also have a, a Grawls River in it? I don't remember. Her superior? Is she talking about who I think she's talking about? I know Cornelia definitely did. Had the, the leader, in fact. Reen Rosine head over to the radio station in Nov Monk. They were handed the script, and after reading it over a few times, they were ready to record. As a side note, the idea of the Church's secret order of knights was borrowed from Red Moon Rose. Hmm, I guess it really is from Red Moon Rose, then. I'll check it later. Reread it later on. Reen Rosine gave fitting portrayals of the roles of protagonist and heroine. Although there were some hiccups, the recording went very smoothly. All was left was to record a climatic scene. Okay, next is a climatic scene in the old castle at night. Reese is a night of the church is trying to prevent the demon that was sealed away during the Dark Ages from reviving. Though you and Noon have been at odds up till now, you joined forces to defeat the demon. I'll let you two figure out how you want to do this. It's up to us. Rosine, you got this? T, let our imaginations run wild. I'll use my crossbow to draw your attention. Noon, use that opening to... No, that's my job. I'll draw their attention. Ugh, just listen to me. No, you listen to me. This is the finale. The demon has risen. They use their secret skills and spells to steal the demon away, but Reese becomes possessed. Reese calls out to Dune, telling him to kill her while the demon is trapped inside her. Is this just a coincidence? It seems too real. I better concentrate on the show. If I were the heroine... First one. I have dedicated my blood and body to the souls of the goddess. It's an honor to take evil down with me, so please. The girls are, if the rumors I heard are true. No, I need to concentrate, if I were in this situation. Provoke her. How disappointing. Were the rumors about the knights of the church false? Are you going to give up now and forsake all the lives you could save in the future? Huh? That's right, um... And cut. That was perfect. You guys were perfect together. <laughs> that's good. That was a little too realistic. I guess Rosine is also the type to sacrifice herself for the greater good, huh? When the setting is so far from reality, I can really get into the acting. Well, the twists and turns, the recording was done in an hour. Reed and Rosine gathered up their things and prepared to head out. Thank you both so much. We're gonna start editing it now, but I think it's going to turn out as great as the other episodes. And I'm not so sure we'll match up to the real thing. To be honest, I've had reservations at first, but fiction can be fun. Good to hear it. I found the scenario was so far from reality, I'd get in trouble with the Septian Church, but... I figure since Red Moon Rose set the precedent, it was okay to do this. I see. Far from reality, huh? Anyway, it was no coincidence you asked us to play his characters, huh? Gulp. The way s they spoke was very similar to us. Though some of the details were a little different. Heh, <laughs> well... You're exactly right. I describe your mannerisms to the scriptwriter, blah blah. I believe I'll have to let my higher-ups know about this drama. I was thinking about telling my students about it, but it might be a little too mature for them. Mm, yeah, but it might be good for your older students, at least. AP increased by two, okay. Let's go talk to Rosine. I'm sure she has something to say about this whole thing. I was a little surprised, but I'm glad to be your service. In fact, maybe I should introduce you. Sure, if you're up for it. I guess it really isn't a problem. There's a lot about the unseen side of the church I still don't know. Wait, wait, Reen. 
I finished deciphering the black records data you gave me. Oh, there's more? Thank you, this is a big help. The heck? The gods of creation? In the beginning, there were two gods. One boasted unrivaled courage, the other unparalleled fortitude. They ascended from the heavens with their kin. It was upon the dark land below that they first met. Calamity. Their nature, op opposing nature is incompatible. The two were irresistibly drawn into battle, and thus began a struggle that shook heaven and earth. The gods and spirits' laments were for naught. As the land quaked, the skies were torn asunder, and the gods' kin could only tremble in fear. After what seemed like an eternity, their clash came to an end. But it was the end of mutual defeat. Their power spent, the empty shells of the two celestial titans were flung into the furthest reaches of the dark land. All that remained in their wake were terrible. Their kin. And the great power. Yeah, I checked it. So the weapons that they used in Red Moon Rose to fight the vampires, those were blessed by the church, so they actually work. I heard the radio drama went well. Whew, that's a relief. They said they were pretty close to having to resort to making me and Monk record some lines. Oh, is that so? Glad I saved you from that faith then. Thanks, I mean, I'd, just, I'd be just fine, but no one in the right mind would want to hear Monk's gloomy excuse of a voice playing all over the Empire. Hmm, she, she was kind of okay with it. They've been working pretty well together lately, as much as she'd claim otherwise. Now this show's gonna be a real hit. It's all next to you, Reen. I just finished checking the audio and asking for edits. As far as casting's concerned, I thought an actual model would make it feel more believable. If you wouldn't mind letting that slide, I'd really appreciate it. Heh. <laughs> Should I just make sure you ask for permission, okay? But of course, thanks, Reen. Keep changing the deal on me, but I guess it's too late to back out now. So this is my last radio appearance. Alright, before I end the video, let's go talk to Jingo. Oh, you're here to buy something? I got this card case in the morning, but it's a bit worn out. Worn, but it's real cool looking. Wanna buy it? A card case? Yeah, you know, for playing cards. It's made of military-grade bulletproof material. With a case like this, you can even play cards on the battlefield. Um, is that really necessary? Anyway, it's first come, first serve. How about it? You want it? Alright, you drive a hard bargain. I'll take it. Heh, <laughs> thanks. Oh, well, this is pretty stylish looking. Oh, looks like there's already some cards inside. Oops, never checked inside. Let me see. Oh, these are what you call the antique cards. They're probably from about 100 years ago. Looks like it's a full 46 card set. Well, shoot, had I known earlier, I would have charged more. Oh, well, if that's the case, I'll give these back. Uh, no, don't worry about it. I already sold it to you. I just gotta chalk this up to me needing more training. But I feel like there was someone at the branch campus who was looking for some cards like these. Was this Stork? I feel like he said he was looking for a deck of antique cards. I think I remember him mentioning 46 cards too. Well, oh well. Those are yours now, so you can do what you want with them. Be sure to take good care of them. Heh, <laughs> thanks. I'm meeting up with Mama next weekend, so I'll be, close, be gonna be closing up shop. I see, are we going home or something? Nah, she told me we're gonna do some social studies together. But when Mama says studies, what she means is Battlefield, so that's probably where I'm headed. I see, sounds like you got pretty rough. I mean, it's a pain in the butt, sure, but I don't need your sympathy. The pawn shop in Heimdall didn't have anything... Now, this is gonna be impossible to find, isn't it? Checking the orbital net, huh? Are you still looking for those cards you were talking about before? Instructor Reen. Yes, but no matter where I look, I can't find them. It's true they're old, but it's not like they're stupidly rare or anything like that. I see. That deck of cards I bought, maybe it's a long shot. We'll show them the Stark. There's something I'd like you to take a look at. This wouldn't happen to be what you're looking for, would it? A card case. What's so special about it? Check inside. And what's inside? These are... it really is them. This is a set of the antique cards I've been looking for. But not just that, these scratches and creases. Ah, this is the exact deck I lost. The exact deck? Yeah, these cards are my treasure. They were given to me by a guy I really looked up to. But one day my dad sold them to a pawn shop, thinking they were his. Oh, so that's what happened. Yeah, pretty stupid, right? If I'd taken better, just taking better care of these, it would ne never, w never would have happened. Seeing these again reminds me of the, those days in Jurai. He was four years older than me. Smart, strong, uh, strong, smart, cunning. I can't even count how many times he fooled me with these cards. He must have been quite the trickster. Is he still in Jurai? No, in the Civil War last year, he... 
I see, sorry. From Jirai, four years older. Hmm. But all that aside, where do you even find this deck anyway? At Ninth Volley, I was there earlier and had the card case recommended to me. When I looked inside, there was a deck of cards sitting in there. I'm guessing the, the previous owner sold the case with the deck still inside. I see, so the cards were hidden in there. Maybe that explains why I had such a hard time finding them. Well, all well then as well. I'm glad you finally found them again. You should keep a close eye on those, Stark. Might as well keep the case too. Huh? But um, I can't just take this. Huh, why not? You said it yourself those cards are your treasure, right? Of course I'm ready to have them again, but I can't just accept them like this. Let me pay you a hundred K for them. A hundred thousand? This is all the money I set aside to buy a deck if I ever found it. Just in case someone else got to it before I could. Please accept this along with my links. Hmm. Sorry, I can't accept that. How about this? Let's make a little wager. A wager? Yeah, I'm going to throw a 50 mirror coin in the air and catch it. You just have to guess which hand I'm holding it in. If you guess wrong, you keep all that money of yours. Hmm, that sounds pretty interesting. Heh, <laughs> alright, accept. If I guess right, you have to accept all 100,000 mira. Deal. Here we go. He's using the ch same cheat that Crow did, right? Well, were you paying attention? Which hand is the coin in? Let's see. This was his favorite trick. Instructor Reed's probably testing me to see if I know it. Seeing that coin fall down below is proof. He already saw through it. So the correct answer is... Neither hand. This is the only option. Nice try, but it's not in either hand, is it? That's your guess? Let's check then. Well, the right hand's empty. What about the left? What? Ha, huh, you look surprised. You knew the trick, so you knew, thought you knew the answer. <laughs> I see. A trick within a trick. You had two coins, then you let one drop and kept the other in your left hand. Yep, that's it exactly. Ha, huh, you're pretty good, Instructorine. You might even bear it in Crow. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. I have a feeling you knew Crow. You must have really looked up to him back in Jurai. Well, yeah, he really taught me a lot. But I hadn't, hadn't talked to him since he left Jurai. That long, huh? It was around 13 when he left, right? It was right after the former mayor, his grandfather, died. Everyone looked up to him. I was the only eight when it happened, so I didn't really understand the situation back then. To this day, I still regret I wasn't able to say goodbye to him. I've just been chasing his shadow since then. During the Civil War, I heard rumors of the Ashen Chevalier, and I thought maybe. But by the time I finally figured out his identity, Crow had already... Well, I'm sure you know. Yeah. But wow, it's pretty incredible that you were able to find that much out on your own. Thanks, I guess you could say Crow taught me well. Incidentally, I ended up deciding to come to the Br branch campus because I heard you'd be here. If you, if you have a chance sometime, I'd love to hear more about Crow from you. It really was a card. Heh. <laughs> yeah, you said it. Still, I never could have guessed that's what brought you to this school. In any case, I'm interested to hear uh, in hearing about what Crow was like when he was younger. So let's meet up sometime and swap, swap stories. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to it. I'll never lose this deck again, I swear it. Thank you so much, Instructorine. No problem at all. Now, make Masked Man, there's no way it could be Crow. AP increased by 4. You mind if we talk about Crow again sometime? I know it's a touchy subject for you as well, so we can just leave it at that for now. In any case, thanks again, Instructorine, for everything. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this Let's Play of The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3, please leave a like, subscribe, and or hit the bell icon.